All right, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to divide complex numbers. So we got a numerator, which is a complex number, denominator, which is a complex number, and we need to divide them. So how do we go about it? Let's start by multiplying by one. So when I say multiply by one, we have to write one out as a fraction, and we're specifically gonna use the conjugate of our denominator. So the conjugate of our denominator is just changing that plus into a minus, which is gonna help us eliminate some stuff on the bottom when we get there. So just rewrite the denominator, negative five, but instead of plus three, we say minus three i. That's it. Now, if I'm gonna make this fraction one, we're just gonna put the exact same information on top because anything divided by itself is always going to be one. No different than eight divided by eight equals one. This divided by itself equals one. So we're multiplying by one, which isn't gonna change this at all but it is gonna give us what we need so we can start to move some stuff away and simplify this bad boy. All right, so here we go. How do we multiply two terms times two terms? Well, the FOIL method, of course. So we need to multiply our first terms together, our outside terms together, our inside terms, and then our last term. So let's get that started. Seven times negative five is negative 35. S seven times negative three i is gonna give me negative 21 i. Now we're doing our inside terms. Negative times a negative makes a positive. Eight times negative five would be positive 40 i. And last but not least, our last term. So last term from this binomial, last term from this binomial. A negative times a negative makes a positive. Eight times three is 24. But be careful here, i times i would be i squared. Now that we have that i squared, we'll come over here and talk about that shortly, and I'll go over what we're gonna do with these i squareds. Okay, we got our numerator taken care of. Let's go down to the denominator. Binomial, two terms, times another binomial, two terms. So we're gonna multiply this times this. FOIL method, negative five times negative five, positive 25. Negative five times negative three i would be positive 15 i. Positive three i times negative five inside terms. That would give me negative 15 i. And now right here, this is where you realize why multiplying by the conjugate is so important, right? What we just did is we created a negative 15 i and a positive 15 i by using the conjugate. And what's going to happen is those are going to eliminate. We'll just take care of that right now. They're gone. See you later, alligator. Negative 3i times positive 3i is going to give me negative 9i. But it's an i times an i, so i squared. Okay. Now that we get to this point, it's time to start looking for like terms. So let's only focus on the top. Ignore the bottom. Do I have any like terms out of all four of these? Well, I got a negative 21i and a positive 40i. So both of those are i terms. We can add those together, and we're going to get um, 19i. All right, so those two combine together to make 19i. Negative 35 is just going to come down. Negative 35. This was a positive 19i. Okay, now right here, 24i squared. Well, let's think about what we know about i. Imaginary numbers. I is equal to the square root of negative one, which we know can't be done, right? Can't multiply two numbers together that are the same and get negative one. So this is our imaginary number, okay? But if I were to square it, so if I was gonna say squared, squared, well, when you square a square root, these eliminate each other, so both parts are gone and all you're left with is negative one. So I squared would cancel out the square root, the radical, and give you negative one as your result. So if i squared is really just a negative one, this is like saying 24 times negative one. 24 times negative one, which would just turn that positive 24 into a negative 24. So all you have to do, here's your little trick, okay? It's important to know whenever you see an i squared and you got a coefficient in front of it, you can just change the coefficient sign. If it was plus 24, now it's gonna be minus 24, and you can get rid of the i squared because you already did the multiplication. The 24 times the negative one made it into a negative 24. 
Okay, same thing here. Negative nine times I squared. Remember, I squared is just negative one. So that's like negative one times negative one. Or excuse me, negative nine times negative one, which makes positive nine. So all you gotta do is erase the I squared section, change the sign. All right, great. We already cleaned up our numerator. We got the minus 24 at the end, minus 24. We can now combine those guys when we're ready. 25 and nine down on the bottom. We canceled out those middle terms. 25 plus nine is gonna give me 34. Now I wanna combine negative 35 and negative 24. So what I'm gonna end up getting over here is negative 35 minus 24 takes me way back to negative 59 plus 19i over 34. Can't simplify anything here. We are good, we are done. We have divided these two complex numbers. Hopefully that makes sense. Study hard and good luck on your upcoming test.